So now let's look at some of the information from the psychological test, the IQ test, that people are using in the field. We're going to look at the preschool ones. The Wexler preschool test, the WIPSI 3, tells us in the technical and interpretive manual that it recommends do not use a full-scale IQ or verbal IQ as an estimate of intellectual functioning for children who are limited English proficient, LEPs they call them. Now, consistent with the research, they tell us, the test, WIPSI tells us, the test authors tell us, children in the LEP group have consistently lower scores than the match control group in verbal IQ and full-scale IQ. So the question I ask you, given that information and given their definition of LEP, which could include English dominant bilinguals who have significant subtractive bilingualism, have lost a lot of their L1, how many English dominant bilingual children have been incorrectly identified as intellectually disabled or cognitively impaired by using the WIPSI-3? This was not the fault of the WIPSI-3. This was the fault of evaluators that don't read the test manual. It says very clearly that their scores are going to come up significantly lower on the verbal IQ or in full scale IQ. What about the performance of non-native English speakers who have completely lost their Spanish skills? So this is in the WISC for Spanish. Remember I said that's a, such an interesting one, school age. What they did is they looked back at the data that they had accumulated from the WISC for English. And they found that Latino native English speakers, which is Latinos who are born speaking English, performed as well or better than their non-Latino English speaking peers. Now these could be bilingual Latinos, but they'd be simultaneous bilinguals that have significant exposure to English um, from birth. However, native Spanish speakers performed lower on most index scores despite being fluent in English. So here again, we have IQ scores that are depressed. Even with Latinos who have full, are, are considered fully fluent in English, who may have significant language loss in Spanish, they're coming up as having significantly lower IQ. It's not the kids. It's not even the test, because this is in the manuals. It's the evaluators. The evaluators don't know their tests, yet these tests have the power to change a child's life, to close the lights on that child's future. i give you a couple more examples. The DAS, same information about kids with limited English proficiency, don't use the verbal IQ, full-scale IQ. The HELP, which is what ed evaluators use, and the DAISY, they say don't use, don't use this as a standard score. It shouldn't be, it's just curriculum assessment. Where should we, what do we need to teach? Not whether there's a disability. So uh, this is actually from the um, Woodcock-Johnson test of cognitive abilities that I have to say, if we weren't dealing with children's lives, it, 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 it would be funny. It's not funny, but it's insane. And I'll read it to you. It's actually from page 40 of the technical manual of the Woodcock-Johnson 3, 2001. Read it with me. With few exceptions, if a subject volunteers an answer in his or her first language, ask the individual if he or she can respond in English. If the subject cannot answer an item in English but can answer in the first language, make a note in the test record even if the response will not receive credit. So here we go. A child responds in, let's say Spanish, we're the examiner. We know that that was a correct answer. We're not talking about vocabulary. We're not talking. We're talking about an IQ test. They respond appropriately to an IQ test. And according to the examiner's manual, you can't give them credit for that because they said it in not in English. So all of a sudden, according to the Woodcock Johnson, their test, supposedly of cognition, it's a lab. It's a test of English. This is this kind of mixture of assessment without clear thinking is why the light closes on so many of minority kids in New York City. All right. Now, one of the things that I did as part of this project that we did together is we created a survey. We, meaning the DOE and uh, myself, is, as part of our collaborative work, 
I created the survey and we sent it to all the CPSC administrators in November, December 2010. We wanted to find out what they thought about assessment. So we said, what do you think is the most important? We got a lot of fantastic information, but right now we're talking about assessment. So what do you think is the most important? So we created this, bell, this uh, bar, bar graph. And if you see the light blue is uh, assessment materials or assessment instruments that were uh, re regarded by the CPSC administrators as at least important. And low importance is the, the maroon bars. So standardized test scores are the most important thing according to the 59 out of 65 at that time CPSC administrators in the New York City Department of Ed. We had 59 responses. The next were behavioral observations. But when I asked further, when I probed further, it actually wasn't the evaluator's behavioral observations. It was when the CPSC administrators actually had the child in front of them because they couldn't get enough information out of the evaluation. This pile of evaluation that cost a pile of money, they couldn't tell whether the child had a disability or not. So they wanted to actually see the child in front of them at the meetings. The next most important thing is expressive and vocabulary, receptive vocabulary skills. What this tell, told us back then in December of 2010, we had to shift the entire approach to assessment. Malcolm Gladwell tells us that when you think about it, intelligence tests, you want to think about what are you testing? Now we're all about categories. If you want to use a computer, you've got to know categories. It's all about where you put everything and you have to think about the categories. Everything's categorical. The windows, categorical. Everything's categorical. But back in Africa, well not back in the days, in Africa right now. Function may trump category. And it makes sense. It just doesn't make sense in the world that we're in.